Hello and welcome. Anyone who's been to Merchant City Yoga on a Sunday knows how much I love catching up with everyone over a cup of my freshly brewed spiced chai. These Sunday chai sessions really bring everyone together. A true celebration of friendship, community and connection. And as these COVID restrictions continue, I want to try and capture some of that magic and share it with you at home. So I've invited some familiar faces from our MCY family to chat with me online over a cuppa. I'm affectionately calling them the chai sessions. Pop the kettle on, get yourself comfy and come and join us. Hey Scott, it's so Judy. good to see you. <laughs> Hello, how are Thank you? Thank you so much for joining me. It's Little chai on the go. I've got my chai stroke black coffee. Yeah. I hope that still means we're having a, I mean, a chai. In. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're just going to picture ourselves on that city in the studio, yeah. a little cuppa, maybe not cake, because my last effort at cake for you wasn't so great. Well, so, you know, I, I, I expect it when I come. <laughs> I guess yeah. we need to keep trying. Um, <laughs> Set the bar low. It can only get better. Exactly. <laughs> There's that lovely picture you shared on Instagram of us. Like that was the last time when we we're just sitting there. I think one of the times yeah. before. You always yeah. make your cakes always really lovely. Stop it. It's really nice. No, it's, it's made with love, and I, I hope that. I hope and that I t- and, and even though I'm going, it's with love that I'm chewing. <laughs> yeah, it's with love that you're enduring. Uh, and, I love it. No, you always make. Um, cake. Hello, hello, hello. Nice to see. You. Yeah. So for anyone um, who's not sure who you are. Um, Scott is co-founder and senior teacher at Still Point Yoga in London and I first hosted Scott here at the studio back in 2018 and I thought it would be really lovely to speak to, to Scott because Scott was actually the last guest teacher, you were the last guest teacher that I hosted before lockdown and it was literally a couple of weeks after you left that um, the world changed when we went into lockdown. And so I think there's something really lovely and special about the fact that you are now our first guest teacher back in the studio um, since opening up. So I'm not sure whether that bookends lockdown for us or if it's the start of a whole new chapter. I think it points to something really, I think it's love. It's a lovely kind of synchronistic thing. I think it points to something that we can I don't know, lean into around I think even then we didn't really know that it was going to change. Well, there was a, well, there was rumblings of something going on, but we were just carrying on in that workshop. I think it was late February 2020, as if nothing else was happening. Yeah. Like it was a lovely Mysore. The rooms were like you know it was just the rooms were busy, and then you know and then obviously a couple however many weeks later it changed. We both had to really pivot quite quickly for our businesses, and then. I think we're just starting to feel we're coming to, only now, as we've spoken before, we're just starting to feel like we're getting back into it again. <laughs> if you see what I mean, like it's been the consistency of being open. Um, I've only, we've only been consistently open at still point properly since the beginning of February, you know, right. and that's after Omicron, you know, so we had these diff, you know, you think you want to get back into it. And then there was another, you know, another wave would come. And so there was, we've never really had a chance to, feel like what it's to feel like to have some consistency about getting back into the space and I think we're starting to get some um, but I think in in between that and being online and everyone the whole world but particularly the yoga industry quotations or yoga teachers have had to we've just had to pivot and understand how to meet people in new ways um, yeah, and how so- to use our voices in different ways and it's inspiring in different ways and that's for me definitely what I've had to kind of um, lean into. How have you found that your teaching has changed over lockdown? Like even just the way you're thinking about it, your approach and maybe some like, you know, if it's if it's actually changed, like your the, the technicalities of it. Um, I'm, I'm not sure it's changed that much. I have far more consideration of people you know um 
and what they're I mean I did anyway right but you that there's there's layers to like the, what how you think how we feel people are you know the, the what I what I what I saw right at the beginning of lockdown is like I felt someone like me who felt okay had a certain position uh, in relationship to other people that people enjoyed seeing me and connecting to me and my work so I felt as I felt inspired to continue I felt it was important that when we were all locked down um, and couldn't go anywhere that first like three months where we, that you weren't allowed out um, or very you know just to go to the shops and stuff that we were able to see each other's faces and then we were able to hear each other's voices and then we and those of us who felt okay were able to be continue to be a space at the times people were used to so that at least there was some kind of connection and normality and that to me was what like teaching online was about for me it wasn't ever about well it is about sharing yoga um, but it's, it was more about the connection that yoga is shared between us rather than me being a teacher and saying, here, I'm teaching, you're like following me. It was more like this kind of understanding that we're going through this together. This is what unites us. I'm someone who supports you uh, at times and I can be as supportive as I can now. And so what it, it helped me to see that, you know, that... Uh, that everyone's got, we've all got ways that, that this thing, in, that, that life impacts us. Um, and we don't really know. <laughs> we have to be, we don't really know. So there's an element of compassion and listening that I think I, I needed to find that, I, that I'm trying to lean into even more. So as I've started teaching again now in person, um, I ask, you know, I'm, I'm, I ask, I'm more considerate about how people are even before they've come in, <clears throat> how people really are and how they're getting on and, you know, how people are finding themselves and find how people are finding they are within themselves. Um, I think the, I mean, lockdown and teaching online, I, I did it, I did it a very specific way. I created um, a community. I didn't do any classes which were drop in. I wanted people to sign up to a membership and with a membership, they got 15 to 16 classes a week. But with that, what, what was a, 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 like a, a boon felt, what was like a boon for me, was that I could curate something that I haven't been able to curate before. So in my longer workshops, like in my workshop that I'm coming with you, there's the idea that I can work on a number of levels um, using... Prani, like mindfulness, pranayama, ashtanga yoga, my sort of technique, um, philosophy, all those things. And I'm doing it over a weekend. Whereas what I was able to do over lockdown was create these environments for people every week. So I had a philosophy class once a week. I had mindfulness at the beginning of lockdown every night. I had mindfulness in the morning before class. We'd chant before class. Then we'd have my source and, and, and we'd have um, workshops every week and we have clinics and people feel like they can come and look and, and, and lean into the different aspects of yoga and meditation that that I'm interested in because they, they fascinate me. So, so what it created, what I, what I chose to create, and I was quite, um, quite, I had a bone in my mouth about it, that I don't want people to do drop-ins. I'm gonna give you a very good rate, like for paying, me, paying us for weekly or monthly and look what you get for that because it became about uh, a com more community, more about look at the different layers and we were able to kind of really um, over weeks and months kind of draw in these ideas and see how they see how they like work over time. So for me, it was like uh, I learned a lot about my own teaching. I learned I learned I, I'm, I'm half I'm OK at delivering philosophy. I'm getting better at it. I learned how to become a better uh, meditation teacher. I learned how to. You know, I, I think every I think every yoga teacher should be able to open up uh, Zoom or something like that, stand in front of their students or practitioners, and for an hour say, "Ask me anything." And I did that. I do that every week. We have a yoga clinic. I don't call it an asana clinic. I just say, "Ask me anything," and then they have, someone will throw something. And you have to go. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, 
but the most important thing that came out of that all of that was the sense of community it gave people and it gave and i i i created the environment um to for people to use their voices and that for me became really really important like for example on those clinics i do every saturday we still do them I'll sit there and I'll say, ask me something. And then someone will ask me something. There'll be like maybe eight or nine people there. And I'll say, okay, well, this is what I think. And then I'll say, I'll go over 10 minutes, what I think. And then I'll say, well, but does anyone else got something they want to say about it? And then suddenly you get other people who are in the same group offering their perspectives. And it becomes this really beautiful um, environment of learning together. So I think what, the the what I learned was to listen more and to give to help people to find their voices you know in my workshops now I I that's what I do I, I try and find people to sh offer their opinion on something and we lean into them so so there's there's far more um, rather than it just being about me it becomes about us um, and that for me has been the big even more, I mean, I was doing, I think I was doing that before, but that's been even more the big takeaway that we're, we're, we're trying to get people to know that their voices are enough and, and find confidence. Um, and I like uh, so many people who've been, who are continuing on our, pro, on our online program now have like a, a saying, you know, it was the best thing that's happened. Lockdown was the best thing because they found still point online. Now it's like all I did was create this environment. And said, let's see what happens when we kind of connect together through poetry, through you know, my love of poetry, through philosophy, through Ashtanga, through all that kind of thing. And and it was almost like I didn't have any particular. Oh, I'm going to do this. It just I always I, I kind of I'm very much. A, let's see what happens if we try this. <laughs> you know me. Yeah, um, yeah. So I think it's being the, be able to, it's being to be empathetic as a teacher, be able to hear and listen to voices and raise them up. You know, for me, that's been really, really, um, or using or using the way that I share to be able to give people the opportunity to share as well. Yeah. And that's really interesting because it seems like a bit of a, a contradiction almost that in moving online, we've all had to talk a lot more. We can't rely on hands-on assists. We can't rely on non-verbal communication being in the room with somebody. So, I mean, I know for me, I've had to figure out how to give more instruction without filling lots of space with my voice. And so I'm really, intrigued to hear you say that, that actually what you've taken away from it is listening more yeah I mean I the interesting thing is like you know I got I, I'm not not confident right <laughs> so like I I think I know I like helping I, I've got a passion for this like it's like I often tell you like I I just am so grateful to be doing this work in the way that I'm doing it. And so I just become more me and more supportive. I mean, I think I've, I found that, uh, you know, all I want to do is see how I can help and support people <clears throat> through whatever, you know, however they meet us or me and, uh, you know, in the environments we find ourselves in through Ashtanga yoga, through meditation, through all of these different philosophy, how can we help people to find their way through or their understanding or how, how it meets them? Um, and I think, I think what, what Zoom online asked us to do is to see how we can find out who we are in those, in this, in these spaces, continue to see, you know, I, I, I remember sitting there on the first, that first Saturday when we opened up and they were like, and we were doing, I was going to do a guided primary and like, it was the first Saturday and we, and we had a free class and I think 120 people had signed up. And we had like 85 on the room and you're just going like this. And I remember sitting there thinking, what, what, what how is this going to work? Thinking you've got 85 people following you. Um, and then feeling really unsure and unnerved about it. And I thought, I just got to get over myself and find out a way that this works for me. 
Um, yeah. Because I, again, it's like this is this is how it works. I I'm, I got my voice. I got my personality. I got my way of seeing things. I got my way of supporting people. It's not for everyone. It's for the people who connect with that. You know, people who want to connect with me will connect with me because they like the you know the the way that I come across and the way that I'm sharing. And um, that's what happened. You know, yeah, I yeah, learned, I learned, in your life as well, doesn't learn it? how to adapt to the environment. And so I just realized, well, I've got an opportunity here to really teach in a way that I've wanted to teach before, which is like, I, you know, I, it's like an online studio. I've not, I've only, I've only ever had a Mysore Shala, which opens in the morning between six and nine. That's all I've ever had. And not somewhere like you, which you've got to fill it up with all different things. And then suddenly we had time to nurture something. And I thought, oh, well, I can teach meditation 20 minutes a night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, just, and, and then I can teach philosophy. I did a whole, I, I did, I did nine months of just delivering the whole of the sutras. Like I've got, an, I've got a course ready to go, which is a 19, I call recorded everyone 19 hours of recording the sutras from beginning to end. And it was incredible to like challenge myself in that way to deliver um, philosophy to deliver technique to deliver all of it and so it became this like it became a personal environment where I could explore the layers of of teaching and what I know and uh, and people really responded the people who stayed really responded and so it, it was a really profound time for me for learning about how to deliver and also you know you know zoom isn't if we're going to, you have to bring some level of a, your personality to it and who you are to be able to resonate. You know, yeah. we have like really, we've had really profound moving moments over this platform. And it's just because there was, I, you, we hold it in a certain way. You know, it's kind of like we can, when we're in a room, we can hold the space. And I just try and learn about how to use the right language, the right tone, the right way of, of holding someone as you're talking to them and creating the environment where everyone else is being held as well. So it's not like, for me, it wasn't like I was, there's a group of people and I'm just kind of saying things, follow me, follow me this. I'm really de deeply interested in every single one of them. And if they are getting something from the, the experience that we're trying to have, does that make sense? So I'm, I'm always about, it's us. Like we're, we're in your workshop, it's about, it's about us in the room. There's an environment like that, you know, that, 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 um, the teaching charts, so Hanavava too, where we all like get the most of this together. We are creating that environment so that we can. And so, language delivery empathy listening all of those things are really really became um apparent to be, be able to hold it especially as people were like you know initially it was fun and then it was again like oh gosh it's now long and then we go we go out and then we have to go back again and so there was frustration there was fear there was anger all of these things and we're just saying let's hold all of this we're not we're teaching yoga we're doing this thing but we're behind it we're holding frustration and we're holding all of these things and when we when we're together in this environment especially over the last two years i was really aware that that's what we were trying to navigate together you know mm -hmm. and so it kind of like so when i'm in these rooms now it's like oh we're, that's what we're doing we're trying to navigate something together in this environment. We've come together for this time. How can we, how can we, how can we support? How can I support you to get the most out of the time that you're here? But importantly, how can I again get something from that too, which is listening? Like I try now and think all of the relationships I'm involved in in the yoga room, I try and see how I've gained something from them as well. You know that and makes so sense. over yeah over that time like one of the things that that I always always say to the you know the teacher trainees and I feel really strongly about it myself is that all of our teaching 
Um, and I love there that that when we're talking about you know teaching on Zoom, like you have to bring your whole self. There has to be part of you there. And that contradiction again about in the beginning, especially a huge part of it was just having to get right out of your own way. Like, because I one of my really clear memories of that last visit with you in Glasgow was sitting in a cafe having a conversation about video content. And we were both saying that that year, one of the things we were going to do was increase our video content. <laughs> I remember and, you and, really struggling with that. <laughs> you were just like, no, thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. And, you know, really hesitant to step up and go online because of all those things in my head about being on video and being on camera and what have we got to share and what are we doing it for and how you know you've already spoken really really beautifully about what it is that we were trying to do and what we've been trying to do over all that that time and and I have to say that I've been astonished by what we've been able to do online like I would ne never have never have credited it um, you know and now that we're back nothing compares to being in the room like you know there, there's definitely a trade-off but amazing what we achieved um, but what I, think, I was going to say was, I think but I think there is because I still have an online community and it's still really beautiful like and I meet I've met most of these people like a lot of them I'm still meeting I'm gonna when I come up to Scotland I'm looking forward to seeing Shelley and Fiona and the, you know what I mean yeah. uh, who I haven't seen since and we've been I'm seeing them every day for God you know um and there is you're right there is but there's still I you know I, with our community with the thing that I've just the thing we've which we created there has been some really deep friendships made and continue to be evolved and we can and so i'm not yes you're right but it's i cult you can cultivate something really beautiful anywhere because i still i've watched us still do it you know i watched us and i and i just i did it just purely through my love of the love of the things that I love, the, the creativity side of me, which is the, my writing poetry and share, I shared poetry after every class. And then we do these things and I'd allow people to sh like, we share these things called ar archetype cards where like Maggie or Fiona will share like an archetype. And then we talk about it before we go. It's like kind of like, so we create things where people are uh, inputting their voice. Um, so that you're right. But I think there's something else about what was, I was only sharing what was really meaningful to me and what I needed at the time as well. I was sharing, you know, so what practice was helping me feel and what, what like reading poetry was helping me feel and then what sitting and, and then sharing that to the people on Zoom. Um, which is kind of like where I'm come back out to now. Like that feels me even more. I have to be even more connected to what I'm saying um, when I'm sharing with people back in the room, like in my workshop now in Cologne. And this morning we did a three hour, um, three hour class, which started off with uh, meditation. We did 25 minutes of mindfulness, a guided people for mindfulness, then half an hour of pranayama, um, and then we went into our the self practice, <clears throat> and I started it with like I started now with an idea or a, 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 a saying which is meaningful, which really means something to me at the moment. You know, this morning like we're working in the city, um, and you're in a city. It's why I love coming to places where there's cities because I, you know, all, I, I teach a lot of places and retreats and really nice, but I think our work. For those of us who have spaces in cities is really important there's a really beautiful so i started with this zen saying i think it's from dogen um this morning where the small it's, it's like it says this the small retreat is going to the forests going to the rivers going to the fields and the ashram the big retreat is practicing in the city and disappearing and for me, like when you 
think around like think think around words and where they land they, you have to equate them to the people who you're sharing to or you're pointing to so you know online when we were in, in, in the lockdown poetry was really important the ability to for people to feel something and within themselves they could touch that was beyond all the crazy stuff that was going on well even now crazy stuff's going on well how can we yeah we have to be aware of that but there's something else we want to we're looking to be to feel and to notice um that's what our job was to a certain degree that's what my job was to try and create these moments where people could, could come back and land in in the present and and be part of something um and so for me like it's continuing to create those moments like my workshops are about awareness completely they're about nothing else like all these workshops, they say, well, I'm coming up to you. I'm doing a workshop on opening the front of the body and, and, and like and hips and stuff like that. But it's still about awareness. It's still about what do you notice when you do this thing, when you let everything fall away. And that can be fear, that can be pain, that can be joy, that can be. I'm really, really interested in how things are coming up in the moment when we notice. And that I think I I I I. I that for me out of the lockdown became really that apparent that that's what I teach. Like, mm. in, and I meet everyone in that way with like, oh, I've got a pain. Oh, I can't do this. Oh, I can, I, I'm feeling this. Okay, well, what does that mean? Let's see what, let's explore that. <clears throat> and so it's became, you know, I kind of come out and uh, I think with the workshop I'm offering with you, this idea, this idea of illuminate, I mean, I made it, illuminate your practice, illuminating of it because it becomes, because you're being present to whatever's coming up and we're meeting it. <clears throat> okay, I'm happy to meet anyone with anything going on and say, how can I help? And that was almost, so that's kind of like, well, for me, I did, again, it, there's, it's an, it was another kind of like, understanding of what kind of teacher I am or what I stand for and I stand for people just being open to where they find themselves and moving from there. Magic, listen thank you so much for answering my final question without me even having to ask her. You know because as a host of a guest teacher students do come to me all the time saying oh is my practice good enough because I can't do this? I've got this other thing going on. And um, they feel that that means that they can't come and, come and join you. And it's such a shame. So I think that spoke really beautifully to that. Yeah, I mean, they're the people who we want to meet the most. They're those The people who have got difficulties are the people who I want to meet the most because they're the ones who 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 help me to become a better teacher. And like I said, like we, I I I love meeting people who find some things that are difficult, who've got pain, who've got all these things because there's a way using this practice that we know so the Shtanga practice. Anyone can do this in a way, and anyone can move through what's going on for them. Always, and it's our, it's my job. It's my my job as a teacher. Your job as a teacher, David's job as a teacher, to be able to help people to see what moving through that is. And so, someone comes with something, a concern. We go, let's see what happens if we move. We work with that in in this environment. That's why we're here. We're not here to go. Oh, there's these things, and we're going to do it like this. And there's that one. And there's that one. And then you do that. And then you do that series. And that series. That's like great. But what we're really helping people to see is what's happening right now in this vinyasa, in this pose and the decisions and, the, and what we can support them with, with whatever someone's feeling in whatever way they're feeling it. So, yeah, I mean, bring everyone in. Okay, we can support. The point is, is it's a self-practice environment. So we've got the time to nurture. This is what, again, it's a, we're nurturing. This is, and we're listening when we're, and we're here for the practitioners. It's the, it's not the, it's not like they're not, I, I, I'm here because of 
we're here because of them. It's the other way around. And so, you know, I, I've seen that that was another really, really important thing that came out of this time. I mean, we serve what comes up and we hold it and we move from there. So yeah, anyone can come. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And I cannot wait to see you oh next It's going to be great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Judy. It's lovely to see you. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed our chat. If you've got any questions, you can email me or find us on social media. And until we can return to our Sunday chai sessions in the studio, I'll see you here next time.